Hey guys, we're out here with Tyler and myself, obviously, and we're gonna be doing some trap making. So stay tuned. All right, so basically we're sitting right here on a on a uh, a natural trail a game trail what i've found here is if you can get a good choke point find a good choke point with a nice bend tree next to it then you've got a good spot for a trap so we're going to clear this out a little bit basically the path um nothing major i've already busted off where i was sitting basically you want it to you don't want to mess up the area too much with your scent you kind of have to a little bit um, You want to make sure that there's a clear path and that the, the brush that you take off is put to the side of wherever that path's going to be. That way it kind of channels the animals right through where you're going to set your trap up at. There is the power for my trap. I basically just trimmed the quake and aspen and cleared it so it can flick up into the air, pick up my rabbit. I don't know if I can stick a stick in this ground. It's pretty frozen. Which means I may have to just use... I'm just going to use this one over here. So if you don't have a stick, if the, if the ground's too frozen to put something into it, just chop a little tree off. Ideally, I would like it to be on this side, but I can put it on that side because there's already a tree right there. And this trap is coming from... The spring is coming from... From this tree this side here. over here. Yep. So basically the way that this is going to work is I'm going to put a snare right here and on either side I put a trigger so that when that snare is grabbed the trigger is pulled which releases the tree and pulls the whole system into the air. Since I don't really have a tree on this side which would be ideally we can walk around all day long <coughs> and just use what we have I'm going to use this guy right here. And that gives me another little piece of brush that I can lay right here, which is gonna funnel the animals in the direction that I wanna go. It's basically, animals are lazy, rabbits are lazy, just like people. Uh -huh. They will walk right around here and go into my snare area. They're gonna take the easiest path. Absolutely. Okay, for this, basically what I'm gonna do is cut a notch, okay? Just cut a notch in there. Let me start out with a saw here and we'll finish with that speed us up a little bit on this level now this for me that saw works great this is where the Baco lap lantern comes in because it's not as of aggressive so it's a little easier cutting those smaller cuts that makes sense now with that now carve this up to that line that I made essentially it's a level spot for the tree to hold on, so when it pops out, it'll pull up. So now I can use the other half of this tree, the other part of this tree, and this is where I'm gonna connect to my 550 cord onto. And you can whip these, this type of a snare up in minutes. And then I'll adjust the angle of this a little bit later, once I know how grippy it is. Okay, now my rope's gonna get tied to this, so I'm just gonna make it a little groove so that I can slip the rope in it. So when you put this together, I can get a side shot of that. It's not going to initially fit, which is fine. But what you need to do is just carve it until it does. So I need to take the material off of here and move it in. What I can initially do is just charge, or charge cut, more up here. See how it'll get closer. And then cut the bottom off of here. You're just going to angle that bottom to match. Yep, and the technique is aim it the opposite direction of your hand. Put it against your body. This way you're not going to cut your thumbs. Don't lose your Boy Scout whittling card. <laughs> <laughs> and just 
cover it, cut it that way. All right, so that, see how that makes a little bit of a pull there? And I need to clear this top up a little bit right here too as well. There's a lot of control and a lot of power that comes from that cutting technique. So there we go. I hope I got the angle on this one correct. I need to be able to snap loose. Aim this up a little bit higher. I already know right now that it's not gonna grab if it doesn't have directly straight up pull. So we're kind of talking about this earlier, watching YouTube videos specifically for this type of information is a great way to start. Yeah. But really getting out here and doing it is where the real lessons are gonna be taught. And when I first learned this, I saw it done flat, perfectly level. But then learning through doing it, I found out that if you kind of make a little point right here, when needed, it'll grip it better. And then if you need it to be more sensitive, just shave the point down, which we'll do here in a little bit. That kinda gives me my good little point. There we go, now it's gripping it. I want it to, when I pull up on it, it needs to pull on it, it needs to grip it. And then I'll hook my string here so when it pulls that way, the tree will pull it up into the air. Now the point you're talking about if I change the camera right here, so if you move that one, uh -huh. you're talking about this point that's right, right here. Is yep. that what we're talking about? So basically I cut it level this way, and then I cut it at this angle, cut it at this angle, and then shaved up back underneath it a little bit. So you've kind of created a V notch. Basically, a little V notch with a little nub. Yeah. I can kind of see it behind the blade right there, there's a little nub. Mm -hmm. And that little nub is gonna grab onto this piece. If you need to, you can carve a little hole right here for it to grip. The problem is if it grips too well, the snare won't let it go. So you want it to grip just enough that when a tree is pulling up like this, you can see me pulling on it, it's not gonna go anywhere. But when the snare grabs down here and pulls it away, then it grabs and pulls the whole snare up. That's basically what we're looking for, is that little lock right there. So I've got this quickie pulled down here. You only need a little short distance between your trigger and your quickie. The, the shorter, the better. The reason is, once this pulls, all of this is gonna go in the air before the slack gets taken out of the wire. And it's gotta go about that high, roughly, before it's gonna actually start tensioning the animal, okay? Now ideally the animal will be a little bit tensioned already, which is what triggers it. But once it comes here, it'll pull it up and it'll hang the animal just about here in the air roughly, depending. If you've got coyotes in the area, you want a big tree mm -hmm. and you want it to be a good six feet in the air in the middle of the air, not on the side. Otherwise you're not gonna have an animal the next morning. Using 550 cord, it's nice and bright so you can see it. And I'm using trip wire here so you can't see it and if you use wire on the part that connects to the animal, there's a vastly smaller probability of you losing the animal because it bit a hole in the string. It's really hard to bite through wire. Some of the, uh, if you get a pig or if you get some uh, squirrels and stuff, they will snap through string in seconds. Okay, rabbits aren't so much of a worry, but depending on what you're getting, uh, raccoons are a really good example, they'll bite right through strings. I like to just hold this with my arm. It gives me the chance to use both of my hands. Okay, I tied a hitch and I've just put a loop in the back of it. What type of what type of hitch? What is it a clove hitch, I think? Don't ask me to remember the names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm normally pretty good with it. Yes. I tied a I tied a clove hitch and I just run the string through the back of it. Now I've got a knot section guys, so if you want to know how to tie the clove hitch, just reference that. So all I have to do is when we get a rabbit, pull the string and walk away. Love the quick release. Absolutely. So that is gonna hold on to my trigger right here. Now, I got a little sneaky trick for tying a clove hitch. This is from my days of growing up on a ranch and tying up a horse. You just take it like this and twist it. And then with that same hand, twist it again. There's your clove hitch. Now we teach the Boy Scouts. 
The good thing about a clove hitch is it creates a lot of friction on both strings, so it's nice and snug. Okay, make sure that this is going to reach. And there we see that it reaches. And now it holds itself just like that. So now the last piece I need is to run a uh, piece of wire from here over to the area that I'm going to catch the rabbit. So you're going to do the clove hitch? Yeah, I like the clove hitch. It doesn't really matter just as long as it's on there. You just want something to tie on there and stay. Yeah, basically. There we go. So that's going to grip it like that. Kind of gives me a unit of measurement. It's right over here. Now, all a snare is, is just a little baby lasso. So, I want it to be about that big around, because that's about the size of what I've got going through here. That's, I've measured a straight line from my snare, my power engine, and I've measured the size of the trap. I'm trying to measure it with my fingers. And I've added about, from my pinky to my hand in distance, and then I'm going to bend this until it snaps. That extra piece of distance is basically so that I can tie that little loop. So all I do is just spin it, and because it's metal, it'll get hot and break itself. There's a lot of ways to tie a loop. A lot of people like to use the bowline. I like to tie a figure eight. I spend a lot of time mountaineering, and it's just an easy knot for me. Um, the time I spend climbing, I'm a big fan of figure eight. <laughs> figure eight's a good knot. It gets the job done. So you took that line, that the, the wire that's running to the trigger, and you put it through the figure eight loop to create your larger loop. Yes. Just weeded it through. So now I've got a string that slides, basically. See how that slides like that. The good thing about wires, once it, tension, once it tensions up, it creates kind of a 90 degree angle, and it stays. So what I need is a couple of little sticks. It's a nice branch right here. Now I'm going to put a, a point on this. We can talk about another little quick technique. You want three cuts. One, two, three. And that little point is going to be the most capable of going into the dirt, especially when it's frozen. Okay, so you put in that branch there that I'm showing, and then a couple little branches here. And then this guy right here. Be careful that we don't trigger it while we're playing with it. Good thing about wire too is you can bend it to the position that you want it to stay in, which is really nice. Okay, so I put this, if you imagine feet here and a head here, that's the height that you want it to be, okay? If you know that there's water this direction and it's late in the afternoon, you want to put it so that this, this wire will slide off in that direction because there's a higher probability of the animals coming down to water than there is for them leaving the water because they weren't at the water when you walked by. So if you have little animal paths to water, make the trap grab them as they're going towards the water. All right, should we try it out? Let's try it out. So here's what we're going to do. Here's this little wire. You probably can't see it. It is connected all over here to the trigger which is connected to the power supply. So when this trigger gets pulled by that wire, it'll pull. So if I get an animal that's walking through, scrapes it off, and as they tighten it up, it'll pull on the, 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 the trap and hangs the wire just like that. So where's our... So this is my hanging animal, basically. That's cool. And that way, if it's hanging up in the air, it's more efficient so the animal doesn't suffer, and it's a good way to keep it away from predators most of the time. Tyler, you've got a YouTube mm -hmm. channel. Uh, what have you been doing with it? Well, a lot of my stuff is teasers for bigger channels that I do, and uh, a lot of my stuff lately has been with an iPhone. I basically I have a cool new trick, and I drop it on my channel. So it's not a lot of editing, but I'm hoping to change that in the future. Uh, get some intros and a little more detail. That way I can teach a little more and answer a lot of the questions that I get from the videos I do with other channels. Give them some love, guys. Um, while I don't think of my channel as a big channel, uh, I remember just mine, starting yeah. out as well. So go over there, check it out, see if, see if you like it. Subscribe if you want. And my channel name is T-Jack. 
All right, guys, there's a quick look at that trap. Very fun, very cool. When I was young, watching Return of the Jedi or other movies like that that had those type of traps. When I was a little kid, I always wondered how to do them. So there's kind of a look at it. Lots of fun. Tyler, thanks much. We appreciate it. Outstanding. We'll see you guys later.